Hey y'all, it's Sarah. So today we're gonna review Alice Darling. This is one of those quietly intense movies. You gotta be ready. Alice Darling is about a woman named Alice who is in an abusive relationship who decides to lie to her boyfriend, Simon, and spend a week with her best friends, Sophie and Tess. It's Tess's 30th birthday, everybody's very excited, and they just wanted to spend time together. So we get to see Alice a few days before her taking the trip, what her routine is like, uh, her interactions with her boyfriend and other people are present, and when they're alone together. You get a very intimate view of her life in that way. And when she takes the trip, the struggle for her emotionally and psychologically to remain on that trip, during which time her boyfriend finds out that she lied to him and that she's actually on vacation with her two best friends. Eventually she does tell them that she doesn't wanna go home, that she lied to her boyfriend about being there and that she just wants to stay with them for a few more days and they all agree until her boyfriend shows up there. So when he shows up, nobody knows how to react. Alice, it has been very difficult to get her to share and things that she does share are during moments where she feels really safe and comfortable. And while that doesn't give her friends the full understanding, it gives them enough that they're on edge when he shows up and are not quite sure how to take him being there. And he says he's there because Alice missed him and you know he's gonna take her home. They have some very intense interactions and she ends up leaving with him. Before they can leave, <laughs> Sophie busts out the back window, car stops, Alice gets out, and her friends just physically stand between her and him. And the movie ends with him leaving in a huff, throwing her stuff out, and her spending another few days with them while they come up with a plan for how she's gonna move forward from there. So the first thing I noticed is this is one of those unintentional ASMR videos where we are observing a lot of Alice's behaviors silently. You can see that she's processing things on her own. There are often a lot of flashbacks during different moments in time that are of these ugly confrontations between her and her boyfriend and manipulative confrontations between her and her boyfriend. How she manages the stress of it all is also so intense because she pulls her hair out, which is not very typical. You don't really see that a lot in films about this. And because of the way that the film is shot, we are right up in Alice's face, which I really liked because if we were too far away, it would feel like we were kind of at arm's length. The way that she keeps everyone at arm's length away from her emotionally, psychologically, so that no one knows what's going on. But being so close, we can really see her expressions and really see how even though she says she's fine, her facial expression may show something else. It made this movie incredibly intimate. Her and her relationship with her girls is something that is well established since they were kids. They are like family to each other. So even though they fight and have like little arguments, it's never to the point where somebody would walk out and leave somebody with something unsaid. The comfort that they have with one another, you know, but not up under each other. In other movies, I noticed that when a bunch of girlfriends are together, everything has to be like a photo op moment where they all have to like be together. But in Alice Darling, they give each other space. So they have the space to spend time in solitude uh, by themselves or in pairs with each other or all together. But there's a respect there that they have for each other and the, the desire to be alone with one's thoughts, you know? Something that you learn over the course of the movie is that Alice doesn't have any other friends or any other places of support in her life. She doesn't have other close friends or she's not a part of any other groups or 
communities. Her every moment is monitored by her boyfriend, so she can't keep a diary. At one point, she mentions that the only time that she could be alone was like in her head. And that's a very strong statement to make. All the events, which are, like I said, not super action oriented. Um, there's not like a huge like argument where somebody's throwing glasses and whatnot, but the location being in the woods, being like by this uh, lake or river or whatever, it's so quiet. There's no TV. So everything that they are saying carries a bit more. There's nothing there to distract anyone from anything other than each other. And when Alice says something really personal, it just kind of lingers there without judgment. It's an incredibly intimate portrait of a woman who has reached a tipping point in her relationship. She knows that she needs to get away but is not quite strong enough to make that break herself. And during the course of her trip there, she finds these like missing person posters for this girl that went missing in the neighborhood. And because the movie is so quiet, you can hear um, side conversations from people, you know, making comments about what could possibly have happened to her. She decides to volunteer with the search parties. She'd go out every morning, go for a run, listen to her podcast, which again, in the quiet of everything, sounds super loud. And even the, the content of the podcast, you know, about wellness and self-care and whatnot is very typical. There's a lot of realistic details detail in the story that make it feel so relevant and poignant. Being in a cabin where her and her friends used to go when they were kids is a safe space for her. Seeing, you know, photos from when they were younger in the space, it's not perfect, it's worn down, everything is old and familiar to her. And it's those details, especially compared to when she first arrived there, how she was taking care of herself, well, how she was dressing herself, how she was like her makeup and everything had to be perfect, hair had to be perfect, versus after a couple of days of being there, how she's much more relaxed and casual. And then day after day, going out with a search party, hearing people's opinions about the missing person and what must have happened to her, what could have happened to her, how she could have prevented herself from becoming missing, <laughs> was also allowed to just breathe. She didn't confront them like, hey, you know, are you here to help or are you not? You know, something like that. It seemed like she was processing it herself as though it could be something that happens to her. But that's an assumption that I'm making. It's a very streamlined, minimal kind of movie, but it doesn't feel incomplete. It feels very complete. So you have a small cast of characters, but there are enough different situations where you can see them in a full world, for example, like Alice going to meet Tess and Sophie at that coffee shop, you know, walking through the city, you know, seeing her boyfriend around his peers and whatnot, them going home, you know, seeing her in the apartment, seeing her get ready. When they come to pick her up, you know, seeing them travel down the road, seeing the cabin, seeing the bar, you know, seeing them walking down a different road. There's enough details and locations that the world feels very full, feels very authentic it feels like it could be anywhere USA well anywhere there's a beach and some woods I would give Alice Darling a five out of five the story is pretty simple and short in terms of the window that all of this is happening and a lot of it is subtle emotional responses up until the end when Sophie busts that window but that moment where they're just standing between her and him not restraining her, not holding her there, but just standing there between her and him. Oh, it was so good. But you know, I'd love to hear what you all think. If you've seen the movie, if you haven't seen the movie, um, I would say Alice Darling is more in line with movies like Violet. So let me know what you think. And thank you so much for joining me here today. And I'll see you guys next time.